Good morning everybody, welcome here to Monkey World. I'm Charlie and we're going to be running a short educational live down here at the orangutan nursery all about our orangutans today. So I'm going to be telling you all about the orangutans in the wild, the orangutans here they have at the park, their rescue stories and their plight in the wild. Um, I'm just at the nursery as you can see the guys are just getting the outside enclosure ready and the guys will be coming out for breakfast soon. Um, so I will be running a short lesson before and then I'll try and watch the guys come out for breakfast as well. And then as they're coming out for breakfast, I will answer your questions all about the orangutans. So I've got a few things to try and go through with you first. I've written them down to make sure I remember them all. Um, so this is all aimed for kids. So we have our educational worksheets that are up on our uh, website at the moment under the downloadable resources, but they've also been posted on our Facebook page a few days ago. So that was a short worksheet just about the orangutans, um, orangutan writing exercise actually. It's a bit of creative writing about our orangutans here. Good, I can see people starting to arrive. Good morning, Jenny. Hope you're well. Good morning, Vanessa. Great to see people. I know there's been lots of schools that are also looking at joining us this morning. So good morning if you're at school. Uh, good morning if you're homeschooling as well. Uh, we do have lots of educational resources on our website I feel I need to tell you about. Um, we have our workbooks and our teacher packs. They're all available um, to buy from our gift shop. Um, just if you look under books there. We also have lots of free resources. So if you go onto our learning resources page on our website, we've also got the education course that we ran in lockdown. That's a nine week course full of videos, uh, worksheets, lots of really good information there. Covers lots of topics. So it covers from English, maths, biology, a little bit of geography as well. Um, so if you're looking at doing some project work and you've got someone with you who loves primates, that might be a good one to do. Ooh, sorry, I <laughs> had sudden rain fall down. I thought I was gonna get soaked. Ah, good morning, everyone. I can see you all coming in. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Stacey. Good morning, Craig. Good morning, Cody. Good morning, Ali. Nice to see you all. Okay, other things I've got to tell you about. Tours and talks. If you are listening from a school and you would like a more personalised tour or a talk um, or a personalised lesson, you can also book that from us. That is on our website under Visit Us Virtually. All the information is on there. Or you can email us at education at monkeyworld.org or you can uh, just send me a message on here and I'll get that sorted for you and get the information across to you too. Stars, I need to tell you about that as well. We have our star program running today. So if you enjoy this live and you want to help support us while we're closed, while we can't take any money from the public, we would really appreciate if you could send us a couple of stars. 50 stars is about 50p and that comes right to us here at the park and just helps out a little bit. So if you're loving it, please do send it through to us, that's as well. I can see them coming through as well. Thank you so much for everyone who's coming. Brilliant. Hi everyone's coming in. Good morning, Helen. Oh, she's got to go to work. The guys aren't out quite yet, so I can't sneakily show you, Oisin. But don't worry, this will all be on record later today, so you can catch up with us later today. Now, looks like they've just finished prepping the enclosure. I can hear them coming out, so the guys will be coming out very, very soon. So I'll just say a few more things. Do I need to tell you anymore? Yes, if you've done any work from the past few weeks over our macaque course or our marmoset course, um, so we had making a, design a macaque enclosure and design a marmoset enclosure, and Annie ran some fantastic lessons from there um, earlier these weeks. So if you have done any of those things, send them through to us. We'd love to see them. We'd love to share them and show them all the hard work you've been doing while in lockdown. Ah, thank you for the stars, Emma. Hi, Luke and Josie. Good morning, Lisa. Good. Everyone's here. We've got a busy one this morning. That's fantastic. Good to see you all up and bright and early on a Friday morning. Okay, so I'm going to start telling you about the uh, orangutans. I'm going to do a quick spin round. So you can see everyone here. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> That's Tom and Jarno. They've been setting up the enclosure for us here. Five, ten minutes, Jarno says. Fabulous, thank you. So the guys are just going to have their supplements and their pills. Thank you, we'll see you in a minute. Um, the guys are going to have their supplements and their pills and then they're going to be coming out. So it's quite exciting this morning. We're showing you the nursery group. So at Monkey World, we've got 14 orangutans. In this group here, this is our nursery group, and we've got five in this group. These guys have just had their outside enclosure renovated. So all these hanging, you can see here, um, 
we used to call them honeycombs that were made out of fire hoses. They're all new, they've all been hung up to give the guys lots to do. And we've got new hammocks hanging as well. So the guys are gonna come out here this morning, see these for the first time, and hopefully be really excited and have a lovely time. So while we're just waiting for them, I will perch and tell you a little bit about orangutans. So here at the park, yeah, we've got 14 orangutans spread over three groups. The, um, our biggest group is here um, at Twan's group, just over here. Uh, that has our dominant male Twan in it and his lovely ladies and also infant Hujan and infant uh, Awam. Um, we have both Bornean and Sumatran orangutans here at the park. So that's the two areas in the world that orangutans come from. They come from Southeast Asia and they're the only great ape in Southeast Asia. They're also the only great ape that are purely tree dwelling. So they're arboreal, which means they spend all of their times in the trees, which is why when we do their enclosures, we try and make sure everything is up high. So they spend a lot of the time off the floor. Um, now, in the wild, they mainly eat fruit, leaves, flowers, insects, small animals. Uh, in the captivity, we give them a little less fruit because our fruit tends to be very, very rich and sweet. And our Angus can be quite gain to uh, weight gain. It's quite prone to weight gain. So we try to make sure we uh, keep that nice and balanced so they don't get too fat. Hello, Luke and Josie. Hi, can you see everyone coming in? Fantastic. Um, orangutans live for around 50 years. Uh, in captivity, they have been known to live longer. They can, um, some have been lived over 60 years in, uh, in captivity. We're here at the park, we've got Amy, who's our oldest, and she's 37. Thank you for the stars, Mel, that's fantastic. Um, and in the wild, they can often only live to like 30 or 40 years because obviously they have things such as deforestation, habitat loss, uh, and also through lack of food um, and hunting, which can decrease the population and decrease their lifespan in the wild. There is a lot of big difference between the males and the females. And while I'll try and show you the adult males here at the park and the adult females in the park, it's very easy to tell the difference. Males are a lot, lot bigger. They can weigh up to like 180 to 100 kilos. Um, which is about 12 stone, whereas females only weigh around eight stone, so it's about 50 kilos, so a lot smaller. Males also, when they reach maturity, get great big cheek flanges and a big throat sack under their neck, um, which makes them very obviously male. So a very typical male will have these fantastic cheek flanges you'll see. Um, they also, so the other thing that Sumatran males get, so I said we've got the two types, Bornean and Sumatran. Sumatran males also get a fantastic beard. Now in this group here, we've got Sylvester. So when we see him come out, you'll see he's adolescent male. So he's 11 years old um, and he's starting to get his cheek flanges. They start to come in about 10 years old. So he's starting to get those, but he is also growing a beautiful beard because he's Sumatran as well. So you'll see that hopefully, and we can uh, enjoy watching him there. Um, in the wild, they are semi-solitary, so that means they spend a lot of their time on their own. The exception to this is mums and babies. So actually a mum will stay with their child for, uh, a baby will stay with their mum for around six to nine years. Um, and often mums only have babies about every six years. So in those last few years that mums with, uh, babies with mum, they see how their baby, um, how their mum looks after new babies. So they learn their parenting skills from the mum. What we find here at the park is lots of our guys that have been rescued from the wild and have been stolen from their mums at very young ages don't have those parenting skills. So a lot of the time they don't actually look after their children. They don't know how to do it, which is tragic. That's the point of this nursery here. So our nursery here means that our orangutans grow up with other orangutans, see other youngsters growing up as well. And hopefully when it becomes time to have their own children, they know how to look after them so they won't abandon them too. So that's the job we're doing here and it's a really important one. Orangutan actually means person of the forest. That's a Malay word. So orang means person and utan means forest. So orangutan literally means person of the forest and that's, where, uh, that's why they, we know that they're tree dwelling, but they spend all their time up in the trees. Okay, I can just hear them getting ready to come out. So we'll be there very, very soon. Thank you very much for everyone who continues to send the stars. Claudia, Lynn, that's amazing. This is so wonderful. Um, if you do have any questions or I'm going too fast, please let me know and I'll uh, try and chat and, and slow it down a little bit. Um, we, this will also be all record so if you have to dash away before we get the guys out go back and look it'll be up on the uh, on the page later and you can enjoy it a bit later with a cup of tea relax um 
Oh, Elizabeth says she can't hear me very well. That would be a shame because I've just gabbled for about five minutes. So um, if you can't hear me, can you just send me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Um, otherwise, I'll have to repeat myself and those who have heard me will just not be happy about that. Ah, lots of likes, lots of hearts coming through, lots of thumbs up. So I'm guessing you can hear me okay. Uh, sorry, Elizabeth, I don't quite know what's going on. I'll try and speak really loudly. I'm quite gobby anyway. So <laughs> hopefully you can hear me all. And more starts coming in. Thanks, Kat. Hope you're well. Uh, that's brilliant. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about the threats in the wild the orangutans have now. So we talked about a bit about deforestation and hunting. So nearly all of our guys here at the park, lots of likes coming in, thank you. Nearly all of our guys here at the park um, have been rescued from the illegal black market trade. So this would be where they've been hunted from the forest as babies, taken away from their mums and uh, transported across the world into the black market trade. This has been for the pet trade and for the entertainment industry. Um, which is incredibly sad because orangutans have a very uh, slow breeding process. We said they only breed once in every six years. Um, that mum can only have a baby, maybe three, four babies a lifetime. So taking a uh, family out, and usually when you take a baby out, that means you have to kill the mother, massively, massively impacts the population in the wild. So in the wild at the moment, um, in Bornean orangutans, um, both types of orangutans, both Bornean and Sumatran, are both critically endangered. Bornean orangutans, they estimate there's only about 100,000 left in the wild, and Sumatran orangutans is even less. It's about 14,000. Now, both of those numbers have come down dramatically since the 1970s. So, the Bornean orangutans has, population has more than halved since 1970. And if the rate of decline continues, as it is at the moment, orangutans will be extinct in the wild by 1950, so in 50 years time. No, that's not right. <laughs> it's very early for me. So uh, yeah, they'll be extinct in the wild in 50 years time. So that uh, in my lifetime, probably, um, and probably in most of your lifetimes, if you're watching and you're home schooling and you're a child at the moment, you won't, you'll see the orangutans go extinct in the wild. The way they do population surveys in the wild is uh, by, they take a small area of forest and they do a survey in that area. So they'll count the nests that they can see. They don't actually count the individuals, they count the nests that they can see. Um, and then they'll times that number they get by the amount of viable forest there is for the orangutans to live in. So actually, those estimates can be quite wildly out because if you have an orangutan could maybe make five nests in one area and if all those nests get counted they're over estimating that population by five when it's made a day nest and a nest each night that week so that put those figures could be quite dramatically out so that rate of decline where orangutans become extinct in the wild could happen even sooner which would be fairly horrific so um, the reason they're becoming extinct is habitat loss um, through deforestation. Now palm oil is a, people might know a little bit about palm oil, that's a big problem. Um, it's one of the big causes of deforestation in Indonesia. Um, it's used in food, in household items, and um, in, like, in your things like makeup as well. And it's very cheap, easy to grow fuel, um, oil. So that's why it's used and that's why it's quite so popular. To make this um, to grow palm oil, huge areas of uh, forest are cut down. That also opens up roots through the forest, which means it becomes easier for um, poachers to go in as well and poach orangutans and steal them for the back market trade, as we talked about for the pet trade. So massive, massive problem. However, it's a very complicated issue. Um, palm oil does create a lot of jobs for people in Indonesia and creates livelihoods as well. So it's not a black and white issue at all. Uh, and there's a lot of things that you can go in and read about palm oil. Um, a little project for you, if you'd like it around the house today. You have to stand up because my legs are going, Dad. Um, if you would like another little project, go around your house, have a look in your kitchen and see all the items that contain palm oil. And you'll see just how big an issue it is because it is used in a lot of things. Um, there is also sustainable palm oil. That also has a few... Um, debatable issues too about whether uh, palm oil can ever truly be sustainable because of the amount of forest is needed um, 
so it is a big minefield so there we have some uh, notes on our website about that as well we have the good the bad and the ugly on palm oil so if you're interested in that go and have a little look go and research that as well the other reasons that um, our orangutans are stolen from the wild are the use in the pet trade and the entertainment industry so over in Tuan's group we have Roro Roro was stolen from the wild and she was kept as a pet this meant when she uh, was came to the park in the early 2000s we uh, we actually allowed them to breed at that point the orangutans here at the park the guys are about to come in so I'm going to turn you around um, Right, so Caroline, the, the monkey's just coming out now. The guy's coming out now. So here they come. So I'm going to stop talking. There's Mimi climbing first, followed by Sylvester. Here's Rika. Hi, Reeks. see if the others come out but they've gone straight up the top there checking out breakfast straight onto the uh the hammock there here's Oshin. so Oshin was actually rescued from a life as a pet as well and there's bulu just behind her let's come and see what's Oshin. so Oshin came from south africa so she would have been smuggled from the wild and she was kept as a pet in south africa um yeah, Jane, they all do recognise their names. They're very, very intelligent. Um, and where she was in South Africa, because she became quite large, quite difficult to manage, she was given lots of sweet treats, um, probably an inappropriate diet for an orangutan. And so she was quite overweight by the time she came to us. She was over 100 kilos, which is double the weight she should have been. And now she's back down to around 45 to 50 kilos, which is a much more reasonable weight for her. And as you can see, she's much more limber and happy and able to move because of this. She's able to hang and, uh, and walk, move in a much more orangutan way. When we first had her, if you've watched any of the TV series, you'll know that she actually walked on her ha um, bipedally. So she stood up and walked quite a lot instead of fist walking as orangutans normally do. And she wasn't very good at climbing. She wasn't mobile and fit enough to do so. With the right diet, so not too much fruit, but lots of, uh, lots of exercise and lots of low calorie food. Um, she's lost all that weight and you can see she's building up muscle and becoming much, much more, um, much, much stronger, much more mobile and much fitter as well. And she's also got the four other orangutans in here to keep her on her toes and keep her busy too. So she is the foster mum to all of our nursery guys in here too. Hope you can all see this. And the start's coming good as well. I'm just going back and see if I've missed anyone. Someone said I talk too fast. I'm sorry, I know, I, don't, I do talk fast. I've got a lot of exciting information to get out and I try and get it out there. Really sorry about that. I'll just scan over to Miss Mimi, who's just there. So Mimi came to us from Moscow Zoo. Um, so as I said, this is the orangutan nursery and we're part of, the orangutan nursery is home to any orphaned or rejected orangutans that are kept in zoos around Europe. Um, so as I said, lots of, if orangutans are taken away from their mother, they don't know how to look after their own babies and they will often then reject their mums and a baby will need to be hand reared. Now we try and stop that cycle because what means if a hand reared baby gets older and has its own baby, it actually won't know how to look after it. So we try and stop that cycle here at the nursery by making these youngsters grow up with other orangutans, see other orangutans coming through and graduating. And then hopefully when it becomes time to them, for them to have their own babies, they will know how to care for them. Um, we have had a couple of graduates from this group who have gone on, who were rejected. They weren't, they weren't cared for by their mum, but they have now gone on to have their own babies and they did look after them. So it's a small sample size, but we know it does work. At the moment, we've got 100% success rate. Um, so we know it works. So these guys look like got apples this morning. Yummy. Lucy, Mimi is five. She came to us in 2017. And here is fantastic Sylvester. 
so handsome. So can you see he's, he's the Sumatran I was talking about and he's growing that beautiful big beard. So he's an adolescent. Let me see if I can come around and see him a little better. No, I can't. He's an adolescent male. Um, he's 11 years old and he's really quite filling out now, growing that big beard, getting those cheek flanges as well. Also in this group, we have Bulumata and Rika. Bulumata came from Budapest Zoo, where his mum sadly passed away a few days after he was born. And Rika came from Berlin Zoo, where her mum wasn't able to take care of her. And Rika, Abulu is right up at the top there, having a lovely time. So when the primate care staff put the breakfast out in the morning, they spread it round, they put it up high. So all the primates move for their breakfast. They're up high, they're moving and they're off the floor. They might reach down to, uh, to grab a bit off the floor as Sylvester's doing there, but most of the time they're up and high. See, he's moving beautifully there. So orangutans, they're around a meter tall. They're not that tall, but their arm span for an adult male orangutan can be over two meters. So really wide. And that enables them to move through the trees. So they don't do true, true brachiation. They don't swing properly through the trees like um, gibbons do. But what they do do is reach across tree branches, as Sylvester does there, reach across with their hand and pull their body across and then um, after them. So they always kind of have a hand connected to where they want to go. Which makes them really well adapted to living in the trees. Oh, more scatters coming in, yummy. Okay, so I was, let me see if I can get you there. So I was talking about how orangutans are now endangered in the wild and we're sort of saying this is through deforestation and obviously if you have less, if the forest is being cut down for things such as paper milling or palm oil production, um, there is less viable areas for orangutans to live, less forest, less shelter, small territories and less food sources which makes it very very difficult. Um, in the wild orangutans are semi-solitary so they live alone apart from mothers and children. So we said the orangutans have the longest childhood of any other primate apart from humans and they stay with their mother for like nine years. But that's really the only um, time orangutans will spend any time together. Uh, they will come together in the forest for, if there's a great food source or for mating as well. Um, but it tends to be the males, if their adult males are in the same vicinity as each other, they will fight. Um, oh, weak is peeing, nice. And, and females tend to ignore each other, whereas the babies will play and spend time with each other. So here at the park, where well, we have our three groups of orangutans, um, Oshin is the sort of head of this group, our matriarch of this group of the nursery. And then we have two adult males. We have Gordon and Tuan that follow their groups as well. That um, head their groups as well. Sorry, I was reading early. A message there. So all of these three that you can see here are Sumatran. So Buluri, Bulamata, Rika and Sylvester are all Sumatran orangutans. So they are the more endangered ones, although both Bornean and Sumatran orangutans are critically endangered. They are slightly lighter. You can see Rika here is a slightly lighter colour, a little bit more orange than their Bornean cousins. But the main differences come from the, um, the adult males where they grow that beautiful beard as well. Dylan wants to know how many orangutans we have. We have 14 here at the park. There's five in this group, three up in Gordon's group, and then seven in Twan's group. No, six in Twan's group, sorry. Hey, Sylvester.
Mimi's cutting through the mud there, being very careful just to quietly pick a bit up. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the orangutans rescues. So most of our guys here have been rescued from lives as pets or been used in the entertainment industry. Oshin in this group and Roro and Ame and Tuan from um, Roro, Ame and Tuan and Tuan's group all came from the pet trade. And that pet trade was in Roro, Ame and Tuan all came from Taiwan. They were rescued from there uh, where they were kept as pets. Lucky and Xiao Lan were found in an amusement arcade. Obviously not a very nice place for an animal that spends all of its time out in the nice quiet rainforest with lots of loud flashing lights. Um, and where these guys would have been stolen from the wild, they would have um, they would have been kept in a very small cage, they've had it in their incorrect diet, which would have been horrifically scary for them as they're supposed to be with their mothers until nine years old. So pet trade is a big problem. Okay. So hopefully that's told you a little bit about the primates here at Monkey World, orangutans in the wild, their rescue stories. So I'm going to carry on watching these guys but now I'm going to try and concentrate on your questions coming through. So if you have any questions on the orangutans do send them through, let me answer them. We do have our orangutan worksheet, so that was on writing tasks for to tell us about a little bit of creative writing about Roro and um, Shaolan's rescue. So you might want to imagine how it, what it was like to be lucky living in an amusement arcade, being stolen from the forest and living in an amusement arcade and do a bit of creative writing from her point of view. But all those sheets are on our website or on Facebook for a few days ago. Go and read them and have a work through them. You could also do some artwork tasks, so we could have drawings of our orangutans based on what you've seen here today. Beautiful Rika there. And the project to see what palm oil, hi Bulu, what palm oil you have issued, um, what palm oil items you have in your household. Okay. <laughs> so these are our three youngsters in the group. They're all sort of five or six years old now. Bulu, Marta and Rika both came to us um, at just a few months old. Most of the orangutans here at the nursery arrived when they're between sort of two months old and 18 months old. Okay, I'm either not seeing many questions come through or none are coming through. <laughs> I will just scroll back and see if I can see any of the other ones. Thank you for the stars, Mary. Three week streak, thank you, very generous. So yeah, they do just help. It's just sort of 50p and it really does help. You might be able to hear the gibbons singing behind me. They're uh, just in the gibbon house. They're all coming out for breakfast at the moment as well. And although it's a bit gray today, it's not very cold. So hopefully all the primates will be out and about enjoying themselves. So I'm gonna scroll right the way back. If no more questions come in, and hopefully answer some of them there. Um, yeah, if you do any of that project work, please send it in to us. We would like to see it. We'd like to share it, show what hard work you're doing. And we'll stick around here for as long as these guys stay out. Years ago, Aris has moved from the nursery at four. It's Sylvester, a gentleman. Yeah, he is. He's very gregarious. He's very kind and gentle. We did have uh, gin in here in the nursery till um, a few, a couple of years ago. And he started to just get a bit boisterous and, um, and also take on Oshin a little bit as the matriarch of the group. So we decided it was time for, hi you, for him to move on and become an adult male and uh, a dominant male in his own group. So he moved to Wingham Safari Park where he lives with a, a lady called Molly, who they get on very well with. Wingham Wildlife Park, sorry. Um, but Sylvester is very relaxed, is very gregarious, is very friendly and plays really nicely with the young boys, especially Bulu, um, his sort of adopted younger brother. Uh, so, yeah. Any questions on these guys? 
can't see anything coming through. Thanks for the stars, Jess. It's really kind. Oh, Jade's daughter's adopted. Who Jan? Fantastic. Those guys are just coming out now, so I can pop over and try and see them as well. In just a second. Sorry, let me sound booly. Amelia from Springdale First School. Hi guys. Wants to know how many are in the wild. Um, yeah, so born, there's the two types of orangutans, Bornean and Sumatran. They're both critically endangered. So there's about, we believe on estimates, there's about 100,000 Bornean orangutans in the wild and around 14,000 in Sumatra, the Sumatran orangutans, um, which is not a huge amount. And if they continue at the current rate of decline, yet yeah, they'll be extinct within 50 years. Um, they think the population will half again by 2025. So the last population survey was done back in 2016. Um, which is when Bornean orangutans were classified, went from being endangered to critically endangered. So that becomes the last one before extinct in the wild. So not very many left at all. Hi Erin, who loves Mimi. Hope you're enjoying the live. Let's see if I can see any more. Uh, Kirsten, the educational resources are on our website. If you go to our web, www.monkeyworld.org forward slash learning dash resources, then you'll find them there. Or go to our website, just type in in the search bar learning resources and they'll be there as well. Um, under visit us virtually, we have most of the stuff that we're doing while we're closed and in lockdown listed as well. So you can hopefully see it there. So you can see on the cargo net, we've got these new Kongs hung up. So Kongs are big... Um, dog toys they have little holes at either end and we can stuff the treats in them so what the guys have done is they've tied them to these uh, loops of fire hose uh, hoop that up so then we can put their breakfast up there in high the guys have to climb use their limbs reach across dig out it with their dexterous fingers rather than just putting their food on the floor in a pile it gives them something very interesting to do it's a bit more interesting for them Thank you for the stars, Claire. Oh, you adopt Mimi, Bulu, and Rika. Wow. Great way to support us, and thank you very much for that. So here's Rika using one of those. Well, I thought she was going to use one of those uh, hoops I was just talking about there. So if you have sent any questions and I haven't answered them, please send them again so just I can see them. Uh, Gemma wants, says, Jessica wants to know if the red stuff is fire hose. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, this is all fire hose that's been donated to us. It's really good. It's nice and easy to clean keeps it, so we can keep the place hygienic. And it's incredibly strong as well. So the orangutans, as they are so much stronger than us, they can um, tear and pull things quite easily. We also like it because it's nice and smooth on their hands so it doesn't cause them any discomfort but we have to use a special type of fire hose there is a red fire hose we cannot give to gordon one of our dominant males because he can actually rip it in half um because they are almost 10 times stronger than people ah i can see some more questions coming through thank you how long are they able to sleep for they tend to go to sleep when it's dark and wake and come and uh, get up when it's light so a little bit longer than us probably does Oshin still hold on to Sylvester? No, not so much anymore. They, they still get on very well. But Oshin looks after Mimi more now and tends to see Mimi and Oshin cuddled up together. Are they warm here in winter? Yeah, the houses inside are really warm and heated all year round. Um, so the guys know and they have access to inside at all times as well. So when it's cold days like today, what we do is move them out of their bedrooms or playrooms um, into the outside enclosure, but we always leave them one bedroom they can go back into while we clean the others. Can Sylvester breed again? Um, he's not bred before. 
is any adolescent. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, uh, the Kongs are exactly the same as the ones you use for the dogs. We get the black ones because they're the strongest for the orangutans. How old do they live? Ah, did I not say this? Um, they live, they can live to sort of 45 to 50. The guys are going inside now, so I'm going to walk over and see if I can see any Etoine's group outside. So they can live to 45 or 50 um, in the wild, in captivity, sorry. In the wild, sometimes a little bit less because they are threats from hunting as well. So it looks like they're just getting ready to get these guys outside. Um, our eldest orangutan here is Amy and she's 37 years old. So this is Tuan's group. So this is the adult group. In here is Tuan, Ame, Lucky, Roro, Hujan, Awan. Six, I did get it right earlier. Who else has sent questions? Thank you for the stars. They're brilliant, thank you so much. So yeah, if, you've, if I've missed a question, please send it again because um, I can't seem to scroll up at the moment. So send it again, let me know it and I will answer it there. There's our team, as you can see, just getting the outside enclosure ready. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a little bit intrigued as to what they're up to. I think they're hanging up more Kongs. Um, let's head around and see if we can see the uh, orangutan group inside. Hopefully my signal holds out. I was in Wi-Fi. I'm hoping I've not wandered too far away from it. This is our squirrel monkey house. The squirrel monkeys aren't out yet. That usually houses some very strange primates in the summer. They're called human children. A little bit empty at the moment. And then here is the inside enclosure of orangutan house. Hi Louise, nice to see you. Yeah, the guys have head back inside. So this hasn't been cleaned yet this morning. They've just had their uh, breakfast thrown in. So what will happen shortly is once all the orangutans are outside, the, uh, this enclosure, the playroom will be closed off. The keepers are going and clean it, make it nice and tidy. While they have just access to the back bedrooms, so that's bedrooms that you guys can't see when you visit here at the park. They're all off show. And then they'll, uh, then they'll clean the playroom, prep it with all the lunch and brunch, and different food and more enrichment and the guys will be allowed back in. Okay. Can't see any more questions coming through, so I might call it a day, guys. So, really hope you've enjoyed the lesson today. Sorry if I've gabbled a bit. Hopefully, you can go back and watch it and catch up as well and uh, pick up any points. But do go and have a look on our website, that's got a lot of the information that I've given you anyway under the learning resources. Um, we will be doing more lives next week. We're going to try and catch up with our gibbons and we'll be doing an educational one as well. So keep an eye on our Facebook page for when they are going to come out. We'll also have our Zoom tours on, our um, lessons if you want to watch any lessons or personal lives as well. So do get in touch if you're a school and you'd like to join in on that and we'll try and do that for you as well. Educational courses on the learning resources page, um, more Facebook lives coming next week. Thank you very much for your support. If you are able to send us a few stars, um, that does equate to a couple of pence for us here at the park and every little helps when we are closed at the moment. Uh, we've also got our Amazon wish list, our donation appeal too, which are up on our website. So if you're able to support us and of course adopting a primate. So if you like any of these guys that you've seen here today and you'd like to help keep them rehabilitated um, and help us look after them while we're in lockdown, um, Adopting is a great way to do that. And you will also get a photo certificate, an annual pass when we can open again, and, uh, and three newsletters a year letting you know what's going on with them as well. So 
I think I'll wrap it up there. Ah, Monkey Life this weekend. Don't forget Monkey Life's on on Sunday. If you want to see more of what's been going on, so that's Series 13. It's on, on Sky Nature. I've got a Monkey Life announcement. I think Alison's going to do that for us too. So keep following the page. If you've enjoyed this video, like and share it, please. Um, we do really need that as well. It does really help all the way through to, uh, to help support our work. So if you can't do anything else, please just do like and share to let other people know that you've enjoyed the video. Okay, right. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Lou. Nice to see you. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Helen. I'll see you all soon. Take care.